Let's talk about how to care for and design with gladiolus. Hello friend, my name is Kathleen and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things marketing, money, and managing your mindset, specifically for floral designers and those of us on a mission to make money with flowers. And today I wanted to continue along the theme of covering off floristry fundamentals and pass along a few tips when it comes to designing with gladiolus. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Gladiolus kind of has an old school daggy design reputation, but there are a few instances where I have found it to be really, really helpful to be able to have access to this ingredient. But I also just want to pass along a few tips in terms of how to take care of Gladiolus, how to extend their shelf life, just give you some insight in terms of their kind of natural thriving environment and give you a couple of ideas on how you might want to play around with and experiment with using Gladiolus in your own work. And I'm sure that some of this is totally old hat for you. You're like, Kathleen, I already know this stuff, but it doesn't matter because having a refresher really next time going to the market, thinking about, should I use gladiolus this time? Who knows? It might become one of your most favorite flowers. First things first, let's talk about availability. Very traditionally, gladiolus is grown from a bulb and in most environments, it's going to actually bloom in summer. Now, summer is going to be totally open to interpretation depending on how warm it is where you are for us here in australia in like a fairly tropical environment summer actually means spring <laughs> but i know from personal experience and because flowers can be kind of forced and they can be imported that gladiolus might be one of those ingredients that's available at your grower or more likely available at your wholesaler 52 weeks of the year. So this might be one of those staples that's readily available to you. And it could be that it kind of becomes one of your secret weapons, one of your secret ingredients. If you're looking for a specific texture or you want to integrate a specific look to your design, but very traditionally gladiolus is available in the peak of summer, but absolutely check with your local growers, check with your wholesaler in terms of the actual availability from a commercial perspective. Let's talk about color. And this is going to be one of those things that totally varies depending on where you get your flowers from, whether you work with local growers or wholesalers, because it varies from the full spectrum. Glads can come in everything from like the whitest whites through to peaches and lemons to super bright pinks and reds and purples and yellows and oranges and like that, like lime green. So totally going to depend on where you are and who's supplying your flowers to you but definitely go in if you have access to any local growers it might be that they have some of the more interesting textural detailed delicate looking color palettes that you might absolutely love i think for me i just automatically dismiss glads at the beginning because it's like all they came in for us was like red and purple, yellow, orange, white. And I was like, Meh, I don't know about this. But when you can get your hands on some of these super subtle color palettes that have like ruffles and like little details on them in terms of some of the highlights, all of a sudden you might be like, hey, wait a minute. Let me just revisit this possibility because it might be that some of these extra touches, they almost look like artistic paint stripes. <laughs> Is that even a thing on these flowers might actually totally appeal to you. So go out there and do some digging and just keep your eyes open because it might be that at the right time of year, some of your local growers have the most beautiful gladiolus and you're like, oh my gosh, maybe I actually do like them. Let's talk about price. For us here in Australia, our glads come in either bunches of five or bunches of 10 totally depending on who you're buying them from and whether it's a local grower or you're getting them from the wholesaler. Now the price varies depending on if you're buying them in a bunch of five or you're buying them in a bunch of 10, but they're actually super affordable. I mean, that's all relative because everything in Australia is not cheap. <laughs> So we buy them from our wholesalers. A bunch of five stems is gonna cost us about $10. A bunch that comes with 10 stems is gonna cost us somewhere between 18 and $20. Now, if you're in North America and you're like, what, I can get them way cheaper than that, yeah. 
totally understandable, but that's just what we have access to with our local growers and our wholesalers here in Australia, because again, they're not really a plant that like thrives in this kind of environment. Remember to write down and document for yourself, how much does this stuff cost and how many stems come in the bunches associated with your grower or your wholesaler. When you pick your glads up from the grower, from the wholesaler, it's very rare that all of the blooms have actually bloomed. In most cases, when your grower is cutting the blooms, they're actually going to cut them with most of the blooms still fully closed. And that's actually how you want to pick them up because the blooms actually open up from the bottom to the top. It's very possible that over time these blooms go past their best use by date and these ones haven't yet even opened. One of the things that your customers might love about glass is that they do last forever because they do last for a very long time because it's amazing that this guy might just fade away and this guy hasn't even opened yet. And also something else that's worth documenting is when you pick your flowers up from the wholesaler, how many days does it take for the blooms to actually open? It's totally going to depend on the kind of environment that you're working in because again like a lot of other flowers very much impacted by the brightness of the local environment so when you're picking up your blooms from your wholesaler most of the blooms are actually going to be closed but they're super easy to process so you can just trim the stem place it in cool clean water there's usually a few leaves that you will want to pull off just to make sure that they're not in the bottom of the container and if you're filling your container, make sure that you don't fill it up too high so that that first set of blooms isn't actually in water. Then you can just watch these beauties open up. So when you get your gladiolus from the grower, or from the wholesaler, you're going to receive them with the blooms pretty tightly closed. Again, it's going to depend on the purpose that you've bought these products for. If you're going to give it to a customer in terms of daily delivery or a subscription, you actually want to deliver the flowers with the blooms closed because that will maximize the shelf life and they'll get more enjoyment and they'll see more value in what you're offering them. If you are planning on using gladiolus in an event, you will want to actually get them a few days ahead of time so that you give them time to open so that they look their best for the actual event day and time. How many days ahead of schedule is totally going to depend on your work environment. If you work in a really bright, warm space, your flowers are going to open up really quickly. If you keep your gladiolus in a cool, dark location, they're going to not open up as quickly. So it's totally worth you kind of playing around and understanding the airflow, the lightness, the brightness of your environment, because that is going to be something that's totally yours to manage. Working in my studio, working in a shop, working in somebody else's studio, everybody has their subtleties and understanding the airflow, the weather conditions. So it's really just something to learn over time. If you want your flowers to open up faster, having them in a brighter, warmer environment is really going to help. If you want to extend the shelf life of your ingredients, making sure that they're in a dark, cool location is really going to help. But play around and just keep making notes. It's like capturing a giant science experiment and having this data on hand is going to be really helpful so the next time you want to use glads in a design or an arrangement you'll know how many days ahead of time you want to order them to have them at their max like fluffiness for a design traditionally when it comes to using gladiolus in arrangements you'll see them used most often at the back of like large hallway or entranceway arrangements or at the back of fairly traditional funeral designs but if that's not the look that you're going for, I want to put a couple more ideas on the table. The first one is you can actually individually wire each of these blooms. This looks very different to this. <laughs> and this might be the look that you're going for. Even if you want to just wire them and put it on a cake or maybe you'll use it in a flower crown, that's an amazing opportunity. Or you could actually individually wire these and put them into an arrangement or put them into a bouquet. This is a very different look to this. So don't underestimate the impact of this very underrated flower. Now the third option, and I cannot take credit for this, this is totally Tanya from Oflora, is actually using 
each of the blooms or cutting down a longer stem and basing up a table arrangement using gladiolus. When I watched her do this, I was like, this is amazing. It's so cool and it just creates such a different texture, such a different look. So it's also something to absolutely worth experiment with. And just to throw another idea into the mix, go out there and follow Passionflower Sue because she is just experimenting and kind of reliving, bringing back to life some of the most underrated products, some of the most underrated ingredients on the planet. And she's always experimenting with how long will some of these ingredients last out of water? How long do some of these ingredients actually work if I'm not going to keep them in their traditional kind of container, traditional kind of environment. Definitely go out there and the next time you're at the wholesalers or the next time you're at a local growers, if they have any gladiolus in unique colors that really appeal to you, just buy a bunch and then have a play around. Definitely take some time for an intentional practice session because this is where it really started to open my eyes to the possibility because all I ever thought of when I saw gladiolus normally was like, Meh, I just don't know if I want to create that kind of look. And then I started to really play around with it. I started to look at other designers to see how they're using some of these ingredients. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. There are possibilities and we can actually use these ingredients in a different way to create the look that we want to create. My friends, as always, don't forget to sign up for my free course, The Ultimate Guide to Building a Thriving Flower Business. It's absolutely free. And all you need to do is visit fourflorescom backslash free course. Enter your name and email address and I will fling it your way through the magic of the interwebs. As always, my friend, have the most amazing day and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.